What would the Lord do for me? But you see, God wants you rather to be concerned about what you are to do for him. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? What you are to do for him. Because let me tell you the truth. Whatever the Lord does for you here in this world in terms of providing material things for you have no eternal value. Car has no eternal value. Marriage, marriage as good as it is, has no eternal, there's no reward for being married. You know what I just said? Marriage is good for this world, but there's no reward for being married in heaven. Giving birth to children is good for this world, but there's no reward for that you begat. I'm not making sense to anybody here. So, so the, 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 the question that Saul asked the Lord was, not what are you going to do for me, but what do you want me to do? Somebody say amen. And that's what we're lifting our teaching from. Let's go to Matthew chapter 4 from verse 18. Let's see that the experience Jesus had with his disciples when he called them for the first time. Matthew chapter 4 from verse 8. Quickly. And Jesus walking by the sea of Galilee saw two brethren, Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother, casting the net into the sea for they were what? Fishers, fishermen. Next verse. And he said to them, follow me and I will do what? Make you. Now, many preachers have stopped at that place. Make you. So, the teaching is, follow me and I will make you. No, this I will make you. I will make you fishers of men. It's work. It's work. Not I will make you. And when they said that word, make you, I wonder what's on their mind. Make you. Make you what? So, in their, in, they are using local parlance. Ah, th that guy don't make him. He don't make him. So, make him. Is the and I don't understand how Mekam comes to this matter. What does Mekam mean? What does that mean? Listen, listen. We must not, as people of God, begin to define ourselves by the standards of the world. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? We must not begin to think like the world does. We must not begin to, Jesus warned us, he said, a man's life, a man's life does not consist in the abundance of things that he what? Possesses. He said, labor not for the meat that what? Perisheth. He said, he said don't, don't um, 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 cast, put your, where your treasure is, then your heart will be also. He said, lay up for yourself treasures where? In heaven. Not where moths or thieves can break in and destroy it. What was Jesus saying by all of that? Have value for eternal things more than natural things. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? What did Paul write? Colossians 3. If you then be risen with Christ, what do you do? Set your heart where? On things above. Where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your heart on things above. Somebody say amen. amen. So Jesus called them. He said, follow me. And I will make you fishers of men. There's work to do. Fishers of men. There's work to do. Somebody said there is work to do. Glory to God. Now, before you think, oh, what is Bishop talking about? What do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? The reason why our focus should be what he wants us to do rather than what he should do for us is because he has done everything for us already. You know what I just said? There's nothing to be done for you that he hasn't done by the cross of Jesus. You know what I just said? There is nothing to be done for you that he has not already done or accomplished or responded to by the finished work of Christ on the cross. So as a child of God, your focus now should not just be on what he will do for you, but what you are to do for him. Because as far as is as concerned, he has done for you whatever needs to be done. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? You say, Bishop, show me. Ephesians 1.3, look at the Bible. Ephesians 1.3. Blessed be God and Father of who? Our Lord Jesus Christ, who is going to bless us or what? Bless us with how many? All spiritual blessings where? In other words, every blessing heaven has to offer, he has given me already. So let me try Michael. I don't know if these other guys have money in their pocket. Michael, come. I think you have money in your pocket. Go red guy, come. And if I know something will drop for me today. So, Michael, give me all the money in your pocket. 
It's your wife's bag. So you see, uh, you plan now. In my simo, you come. How much do your pocket? Is there money in your pocket? ATM. Jesus. All the guys make your money now. So not the plan. People that have money now plan now, man. <laughs> okay, but let, let's just try. So Michael, bring your wife's bag. Close your eyes. Just bring the money, all the money in the bag. All the money. Not in an example. <laughs> no fear. But if you don't give you back, sir, it depends on how much come out of the bag. So, okay. So is that all the money in the bag? Let me check. Watch this. Oh, all the money. Give me all the money. All the money. Is it all the money? Check very well. Any more money? Don't empty the bag. Don't throw the bag out of in this woman's bag. Too many layers, right? <laughs> so, listen, is, is this all the money? I think so. You think so? <laughs> all the money. Now, is there any more money to give me from that bag? No. no, because this is all. Now, look at the scripture again. What did it say? What blessings has God given us? Some or all? all. So, if God has given you all and you're asking Him now, what would you want Him to do for you? No, no, just simple common sense reasoning. The man said, don't give you all. You see, they say, give me, give me. What, 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 Lord, what do you want me to give you? Oh. So if it's me, I will say, I've given you all. But you are still standing there. Give me. He said, no, I've given you all. All spiritual blessings. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Let's go further. Second Corinthians 1, stay there. Second Corinthians 1, verse 20. Show me in the... Uh, NIV, NLT, maybe? NLT. Okay. For how many now? All. All the promises of God have been what? In who? Where are you? Are you in Christ? So he says all God's promises are no longer promises in Christ. It's a promise if it's not yet fulfilled. Once it is fulfilled, it's no longer a promise, it's now a reality. So in Christ, all God's promises are now your reality. How many of them? How many of them? How many spiritual blessings? How many promises? So as far as God is concerned, once you are in Christ, your preoccupation should not be what he will do for you because he has done for you. Second Peter 1 verse, Second Peter 1 verse, um, verse 3. Let's read together. What's it go? According as what? As given to us. Ooh, again. All spiritual blessings. All promises. All things. That pertain to what? And godliness. Through the knowledge of him. Through faith in Christ. That has called us to glory and virtue. Look at the next verse. Whereby are given to us what? Exceeding great Precious promises that by these, hallelujah, you may be partakers of the divine nature. Somebody shout, hallelujah. So he has given me all promises, all spiritual blessings, all things that pertain to life and to godliness. That's why my preoccupation of my mind should not be do for me, but do for him because he has done for me already. Somebody say amen. He has done for me already. Thank you, Michael. The money not big. I'll give you back. I thought you'll bring out Queen's money. Exchange rate. Somebody, somebody say amen. amen. Glory to God. Say, I have all promises. I have all promises. I have all spiritual blessings. I have all things. You know, I was saying in first service, and I've said two, two days yesterday. Look at this thing. When you go, somebody goes to a native doctor for money ritual. Stand up, sir. You, you, go, you come, I'm the native doctor now. You come and meet me for money. You want money. Does native doctor give him money? Those of you that, those of you that, that have gone there before. And just, <laughs> just kidding. Those of you that are watching him, home video. Have you seen when native doctor gives money to the man who for money ritual? He don't give them money. Say what they do. Watch. They will first talk to the gods. Hmm. He is a brother. Okay. Hmm. The gods have spoken. Actually, they will, first, they will first take from you first. Yes. For, consultation. <laughs> for consultation. Then, they will not do this for you. <laughs> 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 
take this thing, put it under your pillow, hmm? under your pillow, then everything will work. Do you know what he has done to you? He just gave you mind. Mind. That thing he gave you is nothing. Actually, the gods he spoke to don't exist. Yeah. Doesn't exist. The gods he spoke to, there's no Ogun, Ogun not there anywhere. Nothing like Ogun. Ogun not there anywhere. Ogun does not exist. Ogun is rusted iron. Rusted iron. Nobody packs um, Range Rover Sport and says Ogun. It's rusted hole. Rust, quandem. You know quandem? <laughs> quandem. Quandem, quandem. Can you, mama, you, know, you know what quandem is? That the quandem is those people that pass on your road. They'll be hitting their, they don't want to buy rusted iron in your house. Quandem, quandem, quandem. Ogo is quandem. Quandem, that's okay. Rusted iron, rusted cutlass. Am I making sense to you? So all he gives to you is mind. <laughs> hey, hey, take this thing, yeah? And you live there with a confidence that something has happened. Nothing happened. It's just confidence that came. But I'm telling you now, the God we serve is real. His spirit is real. His power is real. His anointing is real. His name is real. <laughs> Who should have more confidence? I say all things are yours already. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? That's why Paul says, let this mind be in you. Let this, get mind. Get mind, I can't give us mind, get mind. You can't fail. I said you can't fail. You are covered spiritually. You are covered naturally. All the promises of God are yours now. Somebody rejoice like you understand what I'm saying. Thank you, sir. So, we do for him because he has done everything for us. So, we are not preoccupied now with what he will do for us, but what we do for him. Romans chapter 12 from verse 1. Let's see how Paul writes this again. Romans 12 from verse 1. Glory to God. Here what Paul says in the King James. I beseech you, therefore, brethren. By what? By the message of God. Now, when you read chapter 9, 10, and 11, you will see Paul writing about the mercy of God. How in God's mercy, he chose Jacob instead of Esau. How Esau didn't do, how Jacob didn't do anything, but God decided in his mercy to favor Jacob above Esau. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? And Paul likes it to how God reaches out to the Gentiles to bring them into the family of God. So Paul is writing to the Gentiles. I beseech you therefore, in by the mercies of God, by the mercies of God, that you do what? Present your bodies a what? Holy and what? Which is your reasonable. Show me in the Amplified Version. Let's read some Amplified. Ooh, glory to God. Let's read together. I want to go. I appeal to you therefore, brethren, and beg of you, in view, hallelujah, of all the message of God, that you do what? Make a decisive dedication of your bodies, presenting all members, all your members and faculties. Members mean the whole part of your body, your eyes, your nose, your mouth, your feet, your ears, your hair, your hand, your whole body. As what? A living sacrifice, holy, devoted, consecrated, and well-pleasing to God, which is your what? And what? Rational, now. An intelligent service and spiritual worship. That in the light of what he has done for you. I was telling you last week, remember last week's story, Ezekiel 16. He, he, he saw a child born with, with the umbilical cord in his blood and mess, abandoned to die. Left on the field to die, not washed in that state, just born. And I said, I passed by. I said, Leave. And the child lived. And when the child came of age, he came near, time for love. He washed her clean, put a crown of glory on her head, decked her with silver and gold, gave her clothes to wear. Imagine that. What is the expectation of the behavior of that one who he has loved like that? 
What, what, what's the expected response? To be sold out to his agenda and his purpose. Am, am I making sense to you? That's why you see, you, you, you read the stories online sometimes. A man finds a village girl, sends her to university, pays her school fees, struggles hard. He's, he's not going to university. He says, my wife must go. Trains her to marry her after university. Now she can speak English. Now she, has, she now knows. She says, sorry, you're no longer up to my standard. <laughs> we can't. You say, you don't know, you don't know standard. If I, I spend my money for your body, you don't know standard. I'm gonna make it sense to you. The expectation, the, the rational expectation, the intelligent expectation of such a girl who was sponsored by a man is to say, You for my life. Or the other way around, I'm, I know women who sponsored men. In school, say, me not go, I didn't make my husband go. Then he now goes to university. He now come out. He says, sorry, you can't fit in my circle. <laughs> hey, what's that? No one around me. <laughs> hey, on video. That movie must be, that, ah, no, ah, no, ah, no, no. Home video. That's what I'm talking about. That Paul is writing here, he says, in view of the mercy of God, he picked you from nothing, picked out the, out the, the miry clay, washed you, gave you his Holy Spirit, gave you his life, gave you his nature, made you one with himself, gave you all rights and privileges of sonship. And then, what do you do with it? Paul said, you only have one thing to do. Only one thing to do. But to present yourself. For his use. Is somebody hearing me what I'm saying? So Paul said, I write to you. To present your bodies. A living sacrifice. Because it's from his mercy he saved us. How many of you here know you are saved by the mercy of God? God has shown you mercy. We are here by the mercy of God. Nobody is here because he chose to be saved. We are saved because he chose to save us. Salvation is God's idea. You, you think that is about you, right? You are not in the, you're not the first matter in salvation. It is first of all God saving himself from what he said. From himself. He is the one who said, the soul that sinned must die. The wages of sin is death. He said so. But who sinned and must die is who he loves. I told you the story before. Let me tell you so you can understand. I was trying to teach Abigail this whole gospel thing. And I told Abigail, imagine I say, I come home one day, I made the TV on, and I'm angry. Who put this TV on? And I said, from now, whoever put this TV on when I'm not home must leave this house. So one day I came back home truly, I made the TV on again, and I'm shouting, I'm angry. Who put this TV on? And I said, oh God, it's Abigail. How many of you know that, first of all, my voice will first come down? I will not shout again. I will start thinking, how do I solve this problem now? <laughs> Abigail must leave this house. So imagine Abigail with her nine-year-old small box crossing the gate. <laughs> Where are you going? My daddy said I should leave the house because of television. <laughs> the first thing I will do, first of all, I will break that television out of anger. But how many think I will be smiling? I will be thinking, how do I save myself from what I've done to myself now? That my daughter has to leave the house because I said that is the picture you must have of God. That was God. That, that story is about God trying to save himself. He's the one who said the soul that sinned must be separated from me forever. But the one who sinned and must be separated is the one he so loved. For God so loved. And then I told Abigail, Abigail, because I don't want you to leave the house, I will leave the house for you. Said, Daddy, you will leave the house? I said, yes, I'll be going to leave the house. But we'll not be together. It's as bad as me, you leaving me. I said, but there's another law that says the owner of the house must come back to his house. So I will go, then when I come back. <laughs> I left on your, for your sake, 
but I'm coming back now because as the owner, she said, yeah. She understood it. You get it. You get it now. That's what Jesus did for us. He took our place. He died. But the, the law said, it's only the soul that sinned that must die. So he, did, he was not a sinner. He became sin. And death could not hold him. So he came back to life. Somebody rejoice in this house. Glory! That is the gospel. And that is what God had to deal with. Salvation is God's idea. In his mercy, he saved us. Look at scripture. Look at scripture. The mercy of God. Look at scripture. Look at the scripture. The mercy of God. What did the Bible say? In 1 Peter 1 3. Look at 1 Peter 1 3. Look at 1 Peter 1 3. The mercy of God. Pastor Francis, he saved us by his mercy. Oh my God. I will show mercy. Only I will show mercy. It's not of him that willeth or runneth, but God that showeth mercy. Look at 1 Peter 1 3. Go to the King James, please. Blessed be God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to what? His abundant mercy. What has he done? Has begotten us again to what? To a lively hope. By. Watch it. According to his abundant mercy. Say abundant mercy. 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 Ephesians 2 4. Look at Ephesians 2 4. Glory to God. Stop, stop. Oh, I love this. Look at verse 3, first of all. Verse 3. Ephesians 2, 3. Among whom also we had our conversations in time past on lust of the flesh, fulfilling the eyes of the flesh and of the mind, and we're by nature, 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 children of wrath, even as others. Nature, now go back. Up you know nature is not nurture. Nurture is what you learned. Nature is who you are. So we are children of wrath by nature. It's not what we did that made us children of wrath. It's who we are. Well, my, you never hear Teddy talk. It's not what we did. It's who we are. And we did what we did because of who we are. Adam made us like that. By nature, children of wrath. But look at verse 4. But God, but God, but God, who is rich in mercy. For what? His great love wherewith he loved us. Next verse. Even when we are dead, we are still dead. In sins hath quickened us together with Christ. For by grace we are saved. Somebody say by grace we are saved. What does that mean? We have no contribution to these things. It's the mercy of God that saved us. Somebody say amen. So now you have received mercy. What does the Lord want you to do? What does he want from us? What would you have me do? Oh, I beseech you by the message of God to present your bodies. Present your bodies as a sacrifice for what? For what? Romans 11 verse 30. You know Romans 11 preceded Romans 12. So let's see what Paul meant by what we need to present our bodies for. Look at verse 30. He said, for as ye. Now remember, remember what this is, what's going on here. Paul is writing to the Romans and telling them about how God still has plans for the Jews. How the Jews have not been abandoned by God, even though he has, he's saving the Gentiles now. So watch this now. Romans 10, verse, verse 11, verse 30. For as ye in time past, watch it, have not believed God, yet now have what? Obtained mercy. Through what? So what's going on here? You know, the Jews did not accept Christ. In their unbelief, they rejected him. And it was in their rejection, they handed him over to the Romans who crucified him. But it was by that action that the door to the Gentiles was open. So we were saved because the Jews rejected Christ. Am I making sense to you? That so mercy of God was extended to us because the Jews did not believe in Christ. That was the wisdom of God. That the Jews had to reject him so that the door would be open to the Gentiles. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? So he said he came to his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. John 1, 12, I think. <laughs> Somebody say amen. Go back to that scripture, Romans. It says, even so, watch it now. These also now not believed that through your mercy, they may what? 
So the Jews rejected him and their rejection brought mercy to us. Paul now said it's time for you who has obtained mercy that by your mercy they will obtain mercy. How will they obtain mercy by your mercy? But by you telling them of this mercy. Is somebody hearing what I'm trying to say to you? So Paul says it's now our turn of those who have obtained mercy to extend mercy. That's what he meant by presenting your body, your faculties as a living sacrifice so that through you the mercy of God will extend to the Jews. Somebody say amen. amen. What will you have me do? I've received mercy. You have received mercy. It's time to extend that mercy to those who have not received it. Somebody shout hallelujah. Now, I know you will not say too much amen today because you said a lot of amens over the past four weeks. But just pretend and shout a big amen. amen. Very good. Glory to God. Watch this now. Watch this now. Somebody say amen. amen. So we see. You see, we, we, we see what he wants. That we who have received mercy to extend the mercy. Look at another scripture. 2 Corinthians 4, quickly. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 15. King James then will do the ESV. Or the Amplified. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 15. Hear, hear what the Bible says in the King James. For all things are for your sakes that what? The abundant grace went through the thanksgiving of many. Redound to the glory of God. That's too much English. Alright. Let's see it from the ESV. English Standard Version. Hear what it says. For it is all for your sake. You see that? So that as grace extends. To more and more people, oh glory, it may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So let me show you what I mean. Come Charles, come Charles. So Pastor Charles receives grace. Charles, what do you do when you receive grace? You give thanks to God. God, I thank you. Now after he does that, Charles now extends grace to this guy. Hmm? What do you do when you, give, when you receive grace? I thank you. Then you extend grace to this guy. What happens? I thank you. You extend grace here. Touch him. What do you do? Touch, touch the next person. Your God joined them. You know the at home video. Stand up here with the hand frame here. Ex, ex, extend grace to her. So, what do you do when you receive grace? You thank God. Give the next person grace. Keep standing. We'll never finish the frame. You receive the grace? Now give the next person. Can you see what's going on? We are increasing thanksgiving to God. How? By extending the grace to more and more people. You receive grace, don't keep grace to yourself. You receive mercy, don't keep mercy to yourself. Thank God, yes, what he has done, but extend it. Extend it. So pass it on, brother. Pass it on, sister. Pass it on, mama. Pass on the grace. Pass on the grace. Pass on, pass, pass on the grace. Pass on the grace. Extend the grace. Somebody rejoice in this house. Glory to God. Please be seated. We have received grace. So Paul says as more and more people receive grace, extending grace to them, thanksgiving is increased to God. That's true thanksgiving. Not just me giving thanks, but all that's giving thanks because grace has been extended to them because they heard of the grace of God. What will you have me do? Somebody say hallelujah. Let's see two examples of scripture and then we stop for today. Somebody say amen. amen. So what I'm sharing with you now, we see in two examples. Let's start with this example. Go to Matthew 9. Let's start with Matthew. Matthew, the disciple of Jesus. Matthew 9, watch this. And Jesus passed on from there. He saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax office. And he said to him, follow me. So he arose and followed him. Next verse. Now it happened that as Jesus sat at the table in the house, that behold, many tax collectors and sinners came and sat down with him and the disciples. When you read this story like this, you just think that two different stories. He called Matthew to follow him. Then later, he now sat in his house. And then people now came to him. But see the real story. Luke, Luke chapter 7. Watch this. Luke chapter 7. Watch this now. Luke 7 verse 27. Watch it. Watch it. Luke 7? Luke 5, sorry. Oh, not 7. Luke 5. Are you there? 
After these things, what happened? He went and saw who? Named who? Now you must understand tax collectors and these guys were hated by the average Jews. Because the Jews felt they were working with the Romans against the Jews. How can you work with infidels to defraud God's people? That was the picture here. So Jesus saw Levi, a tax collector, sitting where? And said to him, what? Follow me. Look at the next verse. So he left all, rose up and did what? Followed him. Look at the next verse. Then Levi, you see that? Gave, gave a great feast where? And there was a great number of tax collectors and others who sat down with them. So what you see in Matthew 9, it was actually Levi who had received mercy, called his fellow tax collectors, come and see the man who showed me mercy. What will you have me do? When you see this account from Mark, Mark's account of this, go to Mark, uh, Mark's account of this, in Mark chapter 2, you will see in Mark's account, the Bible says, because of this, many tax collectors believed in Jesus. Mark 2, 14. And he passed by, saw Levi, son of Alphaeus, sitting in a tax office. So they followed me. So I was and followed him. Next verse. Now it happened as they sat dining in Levi's house. So we now see why. Levi invited all his fellow tax collectors. That many tax collectors and sinners also sat together with Jesus. His disciples, for there were many, and they did what? They followed him. So Levi, Matthew, a tax collector, a sinner, a publican, received grace from Jesus. And what he did next was not, what can you do for me? What can I do for you? And brought his fellow tax collectors. Come and meet this man. And many followed him. What are you doing for the Lord? Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? One more example. John chapter 4. John chapter 4. John chapter 4. We read from verse uh, 26. Go to John 26. Okay? Go to verse 25 so we can see what the gist is. It says, the woman said to him, now you know the story, right? This is the woman at the well of Samaria who came to fetch water. And Jesus, you know, the interaction they had, uh, give you water and all, all of that story. And Jesus said, you have had five husbands. The sister is not with your husband now and all of that. And then the woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will tell us how many things? All things. Next verse. And Jesus said to her, I am he that speaks to you. I am he. Next verse. Huh? Right? At this point, all right, many of the disciples came and they marveled that he talked with the woman and no one said to him, what do you seek? Or why are you talking with her? Next verse. And the woman left her water pot and did what? Went away to the city and said to the men, what did you say? Come see a man who told me how many things? All things that I ever did. Could this be the Christ? Jump to verse 40. Jump to verse 40. Then they said, to, so when the Samaritans had come to him, they asked him to stay with them and he stayed there two days. Next verse. And many more believed because of his own word. Next verse. And they said to the woman, now we believe. Not because of what you said, for we ourselves have heard him, and we know that this is indeed the Christ. What? The Savior. I was saying in the first service, what did he tell them that made them conclude that was the Savior of the world, not the King of the Jews? He must have told them the death, the burial, and the resurrection. When I die, I'm buried, I'm resurrected. That wall of partition is broken down, and by faith in me, you can be saved. Somebody say amen. Amen. That's why, and this is important, Pastor Francis, that's why, that's why Philip taking the gospel to Samaria, he wasn't called an apostle, but an evangelist. Because Samaria had heard the gospel from Jesus. An apostle takes the gospel to a place unreached. Evangelist preaches to people in a reached place. Mm. So, P, so Jesus had reached Samaria before with the gospel. Am I making sense to you? That's why Philip was called evangelist. But here what I'm trying to say to you. So we don't go into too much theology. This woman now, she received mercy. What did she do next? She extended the mercy to those who had not received it. Matthew received mercy. What did Matthew do? He extended the mercy to those who have not received it. Lord, 
What will you have me do? It's clear. Have you received mercy? Have you received mercy? Have you received mercy? Are you sure you have received mercy from the Lord? What's your response? To extend the mercy to those who have not stand on your feet this morning and lift your hands wherever you are. Come on, choir. Help me with that song. Have you received mercy from the Lord? Has he shown you mercy? Has he shown you mercy? Has he shown you mercy? As we go on in this teaching, we're going to go into proper explanation of the gospel. Because how we extend this mercy is by the preaching of the gospel. Someone said the gospel. I can't wait to talk about the gospel. I love talking about the gospel. It's the power of God unto salvation. Somebody say amen. Has God shown you mercy? Has God shown you mercy? Are your sins forgiven? I can't hear you. Are your sins forgiven? Do you know your sins are forgiven? Do you know you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus? Do you know that your sins are forever removed from the sight of God? If you know, shout, I know. In case the person beside you does not know, help me tell the person, your sins are forgiven. Help me tell them, look, there, look, eyes, look in their face straight up, your sins are forgiven. God has no record. Come on, tell them, God has no record of sin against you. Look at me. So, some of you don't believe. Some of you don't believe. Some of you don't believe. 2 Corinthians 5.19 NLT 2 Corinthians 5.19 NLT Show me 2 Corinthians 5 verse 19 New Living Translation Let's read together loud Everybody wants to go Do you have TLB? TLB or NLT? Do you have TLB or NLT? Let's read TLB Want to go? Somebody shall mercy. In case you still don't agree, Romans chapter 4, verse 6 to 8, NLT or TLB, anyone. Romans 4, 6 to 8. Romans 4, Romans 4. How oh, I'm available to you. Start from the beginning, the beginning. My you gave. You know, my, my, my. I'm available to you. It's verse 6. My will I give to you. I'll do what you say. Use me, Lord, to show someone. Hey! And enable me to say. My story is empty. And I am available. Is that your testimony this morning? Look at this. Look at something here. Look at Romans 4. Woo! Woo! Jesus. I, I feel a healing anointing on this side. I don't know who you are, but receive your healing right now. I command sickness to leave your body now. Woo! Jesus. Receive healing now. In the name of Jesus. Watch this. Romans 4. Show me. Romans 4 from verse 6. NLT. Uh -huh. <laughs> David spoke of this describing the happiness of an undeserving sinner who is declared not guilty by God. Next verse. Next verse. Blessed to be envied, he said, are those whose sins are forgiven and put out of sight. Verse, next verse. Verse 8. Verse 8. Yes, what joy is there for anyone whose sins are no longer counted against him by the hell? I don't know what you are shouting. Why are you not shouting now? Hey! Have you received mercy from the Lord? Is that your testimony? Then the Lord says, You now, don't focus on what you want me to do for you because I've done for you already. Extend this mercy now to those who have not received mercy. Be like Matthew. Be like Matthew. Call your friends. Call your fellow tax collectors. 
be like the Samaritan woman. Oh, you know, I like what the Bible says. She went to the men. I think it's those men who had dealt with her. Say, the man know you. The man know your name. My wife was telling me um, a version you watched. What's that version called? Uh, chosen movie. And in the chosen movie, Jesus was telling the woman the men's names. Um, you have had five husbands. Emmanuel, Charles, Ateka, Francis, Elvis. <laughs> How many of that? Four. Michael, five. Five. He said, Jesus called the names of the men. So when she saw, she now ran back to go and call the men. He know now, he know now, he know. <laughs> he call on a name more. Are you ready? Come on, choir. Let's do it. Lord. Lord. You're the beginning. You gave me my. If you know if you're in the choir, come and sing it quickly. To reach out to men. Come on, help us. To show them your love. And your perfect plan. And your perfect plan. Oh, yes. You gave me my ear. So I can hear your voice. I hear the cry of sinners. But can I wipe away your tears? You gave me my voice to speak out your words, to sing all your praises to those who never heard. With my eyes, I see a need. Hearts that have so many people to be free. So people to be free. Oh, Lord, I'm a, lift your hands and declare it. My will, I give to you, Jesus. I'll do what you say. Use me, Jesus. Show someone the way, show someone the way, and enable me to say, me to say My storage is empty, Lord. Yeah. My storage hey. is empty, and I am. And I am available to you. I'm available to you, Lord. I'm available to you. What you say, use me, Lord, to show some wonder way and enable me to say, Oh, yes, my story is empty, and I am. Help him tell. He's done so much for you. He's done so much for you. He's done so much for you. The least you could do, the least you could do is to tell others of this message he has shown you. Now make a joyful noise now. We celebrate the Lord one more time this morning. Glory to God. Thank you, Bishop. We are better because of you. We want to appreciate everyone who joined this service online. Can we appreciate our online audience this morning? Thank you for being a part of our service this morning, and we trust that you have been blessed by God's word that we have received. Very quick announcements, and then we'll bring this service to a close. The next service will commence immediately. The audio of the message you just listened to and many others you can download on our website for free. Our website once again is www.cgmimiraclecenter.org. 
Uh, follow us also on our various social media platforms, on YouTube, on Instagram, on Twitter. And you will just be blessed by the things that you will see across all of our platforms. By 2 p.m. this afternoon, Bishop will be teaching on independent television, ITV Benin on the Christ Life this Sunday and every other Sunday. Also, later tonight by 9 p.m., we will be live on Wally Adenuga Production TV on Satellite on the Christ Life this Sunday and every other Sunday. Every Tuesday, Bishop teaches on Unity FM, Abekaliki by 6.30 p.m. Every Wednesday, Bishop teaches on KUFM Benin by 6.30 p.m. also. And most recently, we have added the Edo Broadcasting Service to our list of stations that we are on. Bishop teaches on EBS Television every Tuesday by 7 a.m. in the morning. You could do well to communicate with members of your family and friends and just be refreshed.